Hi everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Ujin Shim, a director of Sando in Korea. Hello, I'm Chang Kim, type designer at Sando. We are glad to be back in here, back in A Type High this year. And today we are gonna talk about the revision. The revision, in other words, correction or modification. These words scare you already. But we'll make it fun. How? Let's sit together. Sando is a foundry, so we make a type. Many of you here probably know making type is a long journey. Once we start a project, most of the process is endless revision. We all know revision is for the better result. However, revision is very hard work with no fun. Moreover, it can sometimes destroy the initial concept of the design. Some designers even hate the revisions, why they still want a better result. It's ironic. But we can make revision fun that will make us happier. So what can we do to make this fun revision possible? We can make it happen by setting standards of revision on the right timing, by clear criteria, and appropriate, appropriate iterations. With the standards, we can design more types in better quality and even faster. To explain how we do it, let me start from some design issues of Hangul type. We need to design a large number of Hangul clips. We have to draw from 2,350 and needs to 11,172 Hangul clips in maximum for one set of Korean font. On the other hand, the number of elements is small. These are the very basic elements. Then we can expand other elements using these basic ones. It means they are all interconnected. If you revise just one element, they can affect over all clips. As a result, the quality is decided by the clips we start to draw, and that is the key point of the process. The general way is we start to draw the group of clips that has the same elements, like N, H, M in Latin. It's an easy and fast way. However, we get to know the overall look and feel at the later part of the process. This is a simple graph, the general process of the Hangul type design. As time goes by, the number of design clips is increasing. To make it rapidly, we have to decide the design concept at the beginning of the process, then keep it to the end. We need to determine with a small number of letters. It means the design concept could be inaccurate. In order to recognize the overall feeling of the type for reading, we need to go by this point because before, there are not diverse clips. Readable type setting can only be done after half of the process. And here is the point when intensive revision is possible because there are groups of various clips then. Unfortunately, there are already too many clips to revise. Therefore, it requires more time. Moreover, revision at this point can affect the extent of a whole revision and it makes the process more inflexible. But what if we can do intensive revision at this point? It would be awesome. And we made it possible. How? 
only with few glyphs, it's 17% it's of minimum and 4% of maximum Hangul glyphs to be made. We write a story using just essential glyphs and do typesetting, then read it at the early stage of the process. To help you understanding the way we, that we selected essential clips, I suggest you one minute exercise. Hangul is a slavery made up of a combination of jasso, that means graphem. For example, this is shield, sounds like S. This is E, sounds like I. The combination sounds C. And we can add mium, sounds like M. Then the combination sounds sim, just like architecture. We can architect Latin letter like Hangul. S, I, M. The architecture based on framework. Basically, Hangul has four frameworks. The first one is vertical combination. The second is vertical combination with the bachim. That means a trailing consonant. The third is horizontal combination. The fourth is horizontal combination with the bachim. It's simple. Vertical or horizontal. And with or without bachim. Now you understand the system, and we invite you to go into the details of the criteria for the revision. How did we select a small number of glyphs for the reading experience at the early stage of the production? According to the framework system, we have analyzed all basic Hangul glyphs. One Hangul glyph consists of several elements. For the first sound, we can use 19 jasso. Among them, we selected the most frequently used jasso. We colored in red. At the middle sound, we can put 20 on jasso. The red colored one are, mo are the most frequently used jasso. But we picked all of them because they have the longest stroke in the glyph. It means this jasso plays an important role to decide the proportion of space. Then for the end sound, 27 jasso are available. Among them, the most frequently used jasso, six jasso are selected. The last square means there is no end sound. These are all selected essential jasso. Here you can see the result of our base research for the most frequently used jasso in basic Hangul glyphs. And finally, we selected all the glyphs that consist of this essential jasso. Then we added 77 more glyphs to help making the story. So the number of the glyphs is 409 in total. Then we wrote a short story using these glyphs. First of all, we made, we made words with these glyphs. After we made sentences using these words, then we created a short story using these sentences for the first revision. This is offset printing for the first revision. Still, it is a a little bit strange story, but we could get a feeling of reading. Here we can capture the overall impression and texture. Please read the English, English transi translated version of the story for the first revision. I read out a little bit. A design for human is like a cup of cold milkshake in hot summer. <laughs> However, a design for money is a, like a 
cup of tepid black tea in bond chili in cold winter. Typography is the same. It's poetic, isn't it? <laughs> we read the story composed with design glyphs. Then we made, uh, made a revision, not the story, but the glyphs. Then 386 glyphs were added, and we wrote another story with 795 characters. And did the proofreading again. So this is a part of the story for the second revision, translated into English. The flavor of cognac from Prost area in the southern Czech, which feels the most full leads to the word in fantasy. If you drank in a shop, the booming and sweet music from the loudspeaker made of box covers your whole body warmly. Doesn't it make more sense? And we added 556 more glyphs and loaded another story again for the third and fourth revision. And did the proofreading again. Until the fourth iteration, the main criterion of the revision is framework. This is a part of the fourth story translated in, into English. There are typefaces, which is soft as a hair of a five-year-old kid, pretty as small hand of a seven-year-old kid, or stout as shoulders of a 17-year-old boy. Eventually, it becomes a decent story. So do you get the point of each iteration? Now let me schematize the process. Drawing selected glyphs according to the criterion for each iteration. Tie setting the story with selected glyphs. Offset printing. Proofreading and critic according to the criterion. Revision, in other words, drawing again with conviction. So we revised the timeline from linear to spider. From the fifth iteration, the work is getting more delicate and difficult. We did, we did deep research beforehand to set more accurate a criterion for this exciting process. From the first to fourth iteration, we are focusing on the frameworks. So we are now refining many details about the outline of the glyph. As you see here, the space taken by each gesso is different for each framework. The position and proportion of each gesso in the framework could be placed lower or higher, left or light, to find out an optimal position of each gesso. We can illustrate like this. In East Asia, the letters is often compared with the human body. So the framework is like making a skeleton. We can make legs long or short. Then we can do an exercise to put the muscle. It can make them skinny or muscular. After all, what should we add? Blood. Blood that brings a nutrient to skeleton and muscles and it gives a good color. The blood of type is the reading experience based on the targeted media. The letter get life under the real situation. Once the framework are done, then we start to adjust the outline of the glyph and homogenize the density. For that, we studied to set the standard of density of Hangul glyphs. The method is simple, measuring the strap by, strength, uh, by length and structure. 
Here, for example, if we give one point for a normal stroke and two points for a long stroke, then the last syllable becomes eight points. It's easy. And so here, you can see the result of analyzing the density value of all basic Hangul glyphs. And these are glyphs arranged in order of density values. From left to right, and from top to bottom, the density increases. This is an arrangement in order of same framework. And this one is an arrangement in order of different framework. So you can see the texture is changing. And these are arranged in order of counter space patterns. So with all this text, we can find out which glyphs are too heavy or too light. So we revealed the revision process to be happy. So I can say, oh no, it's not the fun that I expected. <laughs> but for them, we can say it's less painful. When working with this methodology, a designer can revise typefaces from the beginning of the project in the right direction. The, pr the pleasure of designers at each, each iteration result compensate the anxiety and pain that the designers face too. Through this exciting process, we are making Sandor Jongche from 2017. So you can check in your Chadra, the specimen of Jongche family and Bungmak also. We believe that reading, writing, Speaking, listening, and happiness are interconnected. So we incarnated this in the type design process. That is the teaching of the King Sejong, who made hunger for people's happiness in 1443. And that is what Sandor wants to succeed. Happiness is one of the core values of Sando. We hope to see you more often with interesting topics because the essence of culture is exchanges. If you need more discussion during the conference, please come to our table. Please come. And let's keep in touch and see you again in Paris. Thank you for reading and listening. Thank you.